It is London beautiful. Morning. Thank you for having me. So excited to have you here. Just a word of introduction uh, to sure. Gwen. Gwen is the founder and CEO of Naturalicious, a beauty industry startup that she has developed into one of the fastest growing hair care companies in the U.S. Phenomenal. Uh, she also uh, co-owns Pitch Proof, where she coaches and trains small business owners on how to prepare for enter and win business pitch competitions. Very exciting thing. As well as how to successfully attract investment opportunities. So that's a, a phenomenal kind of work. But when you graduated from Kent State University, was that what you were planning to do? I actually didn't know what I wanted to do when I graduated from Kent. Um, I graduated from Kent with my undergrad degree in computer science. I knew I didn't want to do that. Um, I only did that because I originally majored in journalism. And I grew up I grew up poor, but I didn't really know I was poor until it was time to go to college and there was no money. Um, and when I was in college for journalism, my mother was like, you know what, this is around the time when the, the war in Iraq or whatever was going on. And um, she was like, you know what, if you're a journalist, those like rookie journalists, they always get the bad jobs. You're going to be out in the war on the front lines and bombs are going to be going up behind you and you're not going to make any money doing it. And I was like, oh, I don't want to be, well, I don't want to be broke and have, you know, be in a war zone. So I said, well, I'll just change it to something that I know I can make money at, which was computer science. And I absolutely hated it. It was the worst thing I ever did. Um, I graduated with honors and mm -hmm. I went to work and I had this fancy job. I was making a lot of money just because I graduated at 20. So I was wow. making a lot of money just to be 20, but it was so boring and I just couldn't do it. So I went back to college for my master's degree and I majored in communications, which is something that I absolutely love. Mm -hmm. And um, I knew I wanted to do something with that. Outside of that, I had no clue what huh. I wanted to do. So when did this, um, this idea seize you? What was it that made you sort of go like that and think about what led to Natural Issues? So Natural Issues was born purely out of necessity. I was, uh, and I think a lot of, especially women entrepreneurs, we, we create things for ourselves and it turns into something that other people want and need and then it becomes a business. So that's how it was for me. Um, I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I did know that because I really didn't like working for other people, but I didn't know what I would be doing. I thought I was going to be like a, like a restaurant owner or something. I had no clue because I'm a foodie, you know. Um, so I was pregnant with my son, who's now five, uh -huh. and at the time... I had just seen a movie called Good Hair, and Chris Rock is the producer of that movie. And in this movie, he takes a, a um, soda can, and he submerges it into a huge bowl of hair relaxer, which is used to straighten your hair. And the can disintegrates in like seconds. And so I'm freaking out, because remember, I'm pregnant, right? So I'm emotional. And so I'm like, oh my god, my baby's going to disintegrate like this can. And because um, I know anything you put onto your body goes into your body, you know? And in that moment, I just decided that I was done with straightening my hair while I was pregnant. I was never intending to not do it after he was born. And so I went on this journey looking for products that worked well for my newly, like, quote unquote, natural hair. But I couldn't find anything that was organic and worked. It was either organic and it sucked, or it was full of chemicals and it worked great. Uh -huh. And so I was like, I've got to figure out how to do this. So being my mother's child, a resourceful person. I come home with no chemistry background other than 11th grade for one semester and I decide I'm going to become a kitchen chemist and concoct a hair line for myself. Completely naive, thinking I would just do this in like a day. It took me like five months. <laughs> and I finally figured out a system that worked well for me and I realized after my son was born that you know, the time that I had to just kind of like do my thing and me time was really not an option anymore. So I had to figure out a way to make my whole beauty process significantly smaller, like shorter time. And so before it was taking me like over an hour to do my hair, I was like, if I could get this down like 30 minutes, that would be great. So I took the whole little line I had created for myself and I figured out how I could combine several of those steps. So I had like a shampoo and a conditioner and a deep conditioner and all these different things. I had like 14, 15 different products I was using. And I figured out how I could combine like five things. So I said, okay, I can make a shampoo, a conditioner, a deep conditioner, a leave-in conditioner, and a detangler in one product, right? That was my goal. And so I figured out how to do that. 
and the same thing for like all my other products. So I went from having like 14 or 15 different products to having three, and but doing the same amount of work, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm significantly cutting down my time. I'm like, this is amazing. So for a while, it was just like a, a secret. Like, I, no, I didn't want anybody to know. It was like my thing, you know? And um, I started to talk to my friends and family and they were like, your hair is looking really, really great. What are you doing to it? And so I was like, okay, I can let the cut out the bag. So I would tell them about this hair product line that I can kind of created for myself. And they wanted to use it. So I give it to them. Next thing I know, their friends and friends of friends and all that are asking to buy it. And I'm like, oh, I have a business here, you know? <laughs> um, and so that it was really organically grown that way. Um, and you know, over time, there's more to the story, but for the most part, that's pretty much how I got started. Exciting. You also have background in TV, film, as you said, you did a master's in communication. Yeah. Have those skills and that, that background training helped as you've moved into being a founder, CEO, and entrepreneur? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you would think that communication is really, like, what, what does a degree, in what does degree, degree in communications have to do with running a business? But it's everything for me. Um, I feel that I'm a good communicator. Um, I just innately have a gift for communication. I have a gift for being able to make people feel, like understanding how I want others to feel. And that translates into how we do our customer service. It translates into how I approach when I'm asked to do speaking engagements. It, it translates into how we communicate our language and our words that we use online and on our packaging. Um, if you ever go to our website, you'll notice that our the way we talk is not very like static and stoic like a lot of brands. It's very conversational. It's very girl next door, best friend sort of thing, um, and that's all very intentional. That comes from just that communications background that I have. Understanding how you want people to feel. Yeah, that's, that's sort the thing. of the fundamental. Yeah, and that's um, the thing that a lot of people to... don't take into consideration when they first start a company. Like. They, they just look at, okay, the nuts and bolts of the business, but they don't take into consideration the brand itself. And brand is so much more than just colors and logos and fonts. You know, it's the feeling that you evoke. Like, why do people buy Under Armour over Nike? You know, why do people go to um, the fancy new movie theater as opposed to the normal movie theater? I go because I want to feel like I'm in a luxurious place, I like for my seat to recline, and I pay more for my ticket, but I'm okay with that because that's how I want to feel, you know what I mean? Yeah. So just taking to that feeling that you want people to have, like if you go into a Victoria's Secret store, right, here's the thing I always think about, going into Victoria's Secret is one thing, you can go to Walmart and buy the same stuff, there's a company that makes Victoria's Secret clothes that also makes the Walmart Secret Treasures line, right, it's the same thing. But, why do you go to Victoria's Secret versus buying your product, buying your underwear at Walmart? You know what I mean? It's yeah. the same stuff, it just has a different label on it, and it costs more. But you feel a certain way when you go to Victoria's Secret. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, it's yeah. important. So, when, you, when you're advising people, so Pitch Proof is this incredible consulting uh, group that also helps folks learn how to pitch business products. Yeah. Um, when you're advising, let's say you're advising young people like the students we have gathered here today on how to pitch their own ideas, yeah. what in addition to sort of think about how you want people to feel might you want to throw out there for them? Well, oops, um, when you're pitching, it de depends on what stage you're on, right? So if you're trying to win money for your business, there's one way to kind of finagle that process. Um, if you're just pitching to like a store or if you're pitching to get your products into a retailer, there's another way to do that. And at the end of the day, we're all human beings, right? We're all sensory, we all buy from an emotional and sensory place, right? So if I'm pitching my product to a store that I want to carry, I've got to speak to that person's needs that's in that room. So when I pitch my products to Whole Foods, I was pitching to a white male who has no clue about curly hair, right? And so it's like, how do I get him to understand, because he has straight hair, right? How do I get him to understand the needs that my target has in such a way that will convince him to bring my products into their store, you know? And so it's kind of like playing that game, that ping pong game all the time, of figuring out, you know, how do I speak to this person? Because we often go into situations where we think about us and we think about what's in it for us, but really it's what's in it for them. Right? Everybody subscribes to the same radio station, I always say, which is WIIFM, what's in it for me, right? And so if you don't speak to what's in it for them, they don't care, right? If you're speaking to an investor, they don't care that 
you know, oh, I started this, you know, cream, this body cream line because my nephew had eczema and, you know, it cleared up his eczema. Da, da. They, they care about the backstory, but they don't want you to spend all your time on that. They want to know how am I going to make money, yeah. period, point blank. And so if you're not speaking to that need, you're going to lose that deal. Right. So you always have to figure out what's in it for them and how making, how you speaking to them is going to make them feel. If I'm an investor and I figure out I'm going to make a ton of money off of you, I'm going to be really excited and I feel really good. But if you just make me feel like, okay, you have a good story, but you, there's really no way for me to make money, and that's my goal here, yeah. we don't have any business together. You know what I mean? So it's always right. figuring out what's in it for that other person. Right, and that's a real sort of switch for, I think, students in college, because, you know, I, and I'm sure that, that the uh, students at this table will, will recognize this, you're constantly being asked, who are you when you're in college? What's your major? What are you going to do? And it, it forces a lot of reflection on yourself. Yeah. And then learning to make that switch to really be thinking about others. Yeah. So I do want to think about the others at this table and give them a chance okay. to talk to you. So I think we'll. Uh,